In strength circles, the name Paul Anderson carries weight of mythological proportions. With gargantuan 36-inch thighs, Anderson reportedly once completed a full squat with 1,200 pounds. He was also the last American to win a gold medal in Olympic weightlifting at the 1956 Games in Melbourne. Let's take a closer look at Paul's unique training style and see what lessons we can learn about bodybuilding from the master of strength. Lesson number one, full squats. Paul said he learned early on that the key to being strong was building the lower body. What better exercise to accomplish this than the squat? And not just any old garden variety squat will do. Barring low back issues, Paul says full squats should be performed. That means all the way down, calves to hamstrings. This makes sense as full squats have shown to be more useful for building strength and functionality. And looking at the former gold medalist squads, who's to argue? If your range of motion is limited due to mobility issues, consider placing your heels on a board or a weight plate while squatting to get that full range of motion. Lesson number two, take your time. Paul Anderson took a unique approach to his weightlifting. He did not think of a workout as a specific, constrained period of time to lift weights. Instead, he trained all day. Now, training all day would be impossible if you followed the general advice of short one to two minute rest periods between sets. You would run yourself into the ground. But Paul was around long before chasing the pump was standard practice, and he knew that longer rest periods were needed. To be at maximum strength, Anderson would take 10 to 15 minutes between each set and 30 to 60 minutes between each exercise. It's easy to see how this could turn into an all-day affair. Luckily, Paul trained at home and had the ability to lift throughout the day and attend to other duties. Interestingly, research has also found that taking more rest between sets leads to both greater strength and muscular hypertrophy gains. Maybe he was onto something with these all-day workouts. Now we may not have the opportunity to train all day long, but taking enough time to make sure we're fully recovered before the start of each new set is probably a smart idea. Lesson number three, higher frequency for maximum results. One of Paul's favorite ways to train was to do all of his squatting movements on one day and upper body exercises the following day. Today we would refer to this as an upper lower split. To take advantage of this type of split, higher frequency training is needed, with frequency here referring to how often each muscle group or each exercise is trained. To do this effectively, lower session volumes must be used. For instance, if you normally complete 15 sets for legs on Friday, you would instead do 5 sets for legs split up into 3 days, say Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. This would allow you to attack each set with greater effort since you would not be as fatigued in the later sets. A sample Paul Anderson style routine using an upper lower split might look like this. You can see Paul mixes his rep ranges from sets of 10 to even 20 all the way down to sets of 3 and 5, combining a mixture of strength and higher volume training. He also focuses on primary movements like squats and bench press over accessory movements like curls and extensions. What's perhaps most impressive about Paul Anderson is that he accomplished his enormous size and strength before steroid use became popularized in the United States. But Paul did figure out early on that eating a lot of calories was critical to gaining size. Paul would famously drink a full gallon of milk throughout the day and throughout his training session to fuel his growth and his strength. Well that's all for now. Happy squatting and as always, 